What's up everyone, I am Jason C. And today on the Mash and Drum, we are having ourselves a blind mashup, a benchmark series for the channel. See what I did there? Buffalo Trace has quietly released five new versions of their bottom shelf label called Benchmark with new labels, ages, and proof points. Today we're gonna blind taste all of them right now on the Mash and Drum. For years, the benchmark like I'm holding here had no age statement and was watered down to only 80 proof. Uh, this is a great mixer, it's an easy sipper, but in true Buffalo Trace fashion, they decided that they needed to corner the bottom shelf market even more by introducing new expressions of benchmark to reinvigorate the brand with some new interest. So as you can see, all five of them have different labels and they actually all have different proof points. Original benchmark is aged at least 36 months and there's no indication besides the bottled and bond edition right here that the rest of the lineup has gotten any older. So let's meet the entire new vertical lineup from lowest proof to highest. First up, we have the top floor edition, which is only 86 proof. Front of the bottle states that elevation matters. I guess we will find out. This one is only about 17 bucks. Next up is the small batch coming in at a little bit higher at 90 proof and the bottle states select casks. Now that refers to the select cast that they are using to small batch the bourbon for a consistent flavor profile. This one was also about 17 bucks. Next up is the single barrel coming in at 95 proof and sporting the words ham picked on the front. These are the product of one barrel and can differ from bottle to bottle depending on what barrel is in your bottle. This was actually the most expensive at about 25 bucks. Fourth up is the bonded benchmark coming in at 100 proof and because of this, we know this bourbon is at least four years old. Single season is stated on the front of the bottle, referring to the distilling season needed in order to call this bourbon bonded. This was about, same thing, about 18, 19 bucks. And lastly, with that bright orange label is the full proof. This is 125 proof of benchmark goodness. The words extra strong are on the front to tell you to tread lightly and beware of that proof point. This one was only about 20 bucks. Okay guys, so again, the prices on these could vary from state to state, but for the most part, these are all really affordable bourbons, or should be, hopefully because they're Buffalo Trace products, nobody out there is, you know, marking these up too badly. Um, also, because these just released last month, I'm not really sure where in the, you know, the United States these are going to be dropping as well. These I got from a buddy in Indiana who, uh, who sent these to me. So I know they showed up in Indiana first. I did see them post in a couple of other states. So if you're interested in these, definitely keep a lookout. Um, now, for those of you that don't know, Benchmark Old Number 8 Bourbon was created by Seagram's in the late 1960s as a luxury brand and was originally named just Benchmark Bourbon. Now, the story goes, and the story is actually here on the side of the bottle, where it says in 1773, three McAfee brothers named James, George, and Robert left Virginia westward to explore the uncharted territory that would later be known as Kentucky. Traveling by canoe at first, the McAfee company eventually followed a native trail overland that led to the Great Buffalo Crossing, where the brothers surveyed the land now home to the world's most award-winning distillery, Buffalo Trace Distillery. So McAfee, which was added to the label, uh, is basically a homage to the McAfee brothers. So McAfee's benchmark bourbon pays homage to those three brothers that surveyed the land that is now Buffalo Trace. Um, also real quick, I do want to mention that, remember, this is Buffalo Trace mash bill number one in this bottle. Same mash bill that's in Eagle Rare, same mash bill that's in regular Buffalo Trace bourbon, Colonel Taylor, also Stag, Stag Jr. So that same mash bill is all in these bottles. All right, so first what I'm gonna do is mix these up a little bit. So I have a sticker on the bottom of each glass letting me know what bottle is which. So again, some of these are pretty low proof, some of them are higher proof. We'll see how they balance out, if they taste young, if they taste a little bit older, if the proof helps, 
if the top floor helps, <laughs> I guess we're going to find out. So let's start with this one here. Wow, this one's very, uh, very light vanilla and also kind of juicy fruit. Get like a juicy fruit gum note here. Light caramel, a little bit of spice. Yeah, very sweet, very typical Buffalo Trace Mashable number one. Getting some light corn on the nose too. So let's try it. Let's go for a sip. Cheers, guys. Oh, that one's really nice, actually. It's not overly complex, but there's actually a really nice balance. It doesn't taste as corn forward and as young as the regular benchmark does. It's got a little more viscosity to it. I think this might be one of the higher proof ones. I think it's somewhere in the middle, um, honestly. So I don't know, let's go for one more sip of that one. It's that juicy fruit kind of candy type flavor I was getting. A little bit of spice. Nice finish on this one too. Mm, that's good. So far, number one. All right, liking that one. All right, let's go to number two here. Let's see what we get. Whoa, so this one getting a big alcohol punch on the nose. Very rich vanilla and caramel. I could also get a little bit more barrel char on this one. Definitely some more oak presence here. Man, that's potent. I would put any amount of money that that's got to be the foolproof because that thing is coming in hot just on the nose alone. Let's try to whip some air into this thing. All right, here we go. This is more just rich caramels, vanillas, nothing crazy, you know, again, nothing overly complex. It's coming straight forward, straight ahead. There's some citrus spice in there. A little bit of a tobacco note. But a lot of vanilla, caramel, oak, and there's some, definitely some barrel char in there. So let's give it a go. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's coming in hot. Woo! Man, that is, uh, that's potent. That's, you know, I like barrel proof, but that's like a younger barrel proof bourbon, and that thing is coming in hot. Let's go for another sip of that one. I <laughs> gotta watch myself with uh, number two here. Yeah, this one is more brown sugar, a lot more spice. You know, Buffalo Trace mash bill one is the low rye mash bill, but I feel like it, it, it drinks like a high rye. This one is very strong, very alcohol forward, very alcohol heavy on this one. I'm gonna need some water after this one. Woo! <clears throat> All right, let's go to number three, see what we get now that my palate's recovered a little bit. Oh, this one's really nice on the nose. This is also very balanced. And some beautiful caramel in here, some spice. Getting a little bit more of a grape note on this one, which is really nice. Sometimes you get those on Eagle Rare or even the Stag Junior, you get like a cherry or a grape note. This one's definitely coming across in this one. Man, I thought number one had a really good nose. Oh my God, when you compare them, this literally smells like fresh uh, mash when you're walking around Buffalo Trace. This one actually holds up. It's got a little bit more of an oak presence to it. All right, let's go for a sip of this one. I got a little bit of that cherry grape note on that one. Definitely very, very flavorful, very balanced, good proof point. I don't know, that one, that one could be my favorite. Third sip had a little slight bitterness to it but very sugary sweet, really nicely balanced. Again, I really love the cherry and the grape note I'm getting on this one. Go along with the caramel, the vanilla, the spice. I'm gonna have a little bit more water here. All right, we're moving on to number four. Let's see which one is in this one. So this nose is very light compared to these three. I have a feeling we're moving down in proof a little bit. Very, very light vanilla. A little bit of honey here. Getting like an orange creamsicle type vibe on this one. Yeah, not su not super bold. I feel like the other three were giving off a little bit more of a nose here, but pretty solid. Let's go for a sip of this one. Yeah, that's got to be one of the lower proof ones. That is just not bringing a lot of flavor to the forefront. Um, it's just very light. It's very light caramel, vanilla. There's some apple in there too that I'm picking up. Let's go for one more sip here. Yeah, almost like apple peel. A little bit of cinnamon, but very light, very caramel. Yeah, pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna need water after that one, so let's go to the last one here, guys. Wow, this one might be even lighter on the nose. Again, very orange, very light caramel. Not very different. These two are very similar. 
a little bit more spice on this one than uh, than number four. A little bit of that honey is still there too. All right, let's go for a sip. Not much going on in that one either. The last two, I would venture a guess that these are pretty uh, pretty low in proof here. I don't know which one I like better between the last two. I think this last one I like better. This one here might be my least favorite. There's really not a lot going on in that one. All right. Um, I think I have these pretty pegged uh, as far as what I like the best out of all of them. I think it's going to come down to number one and number three as being my favorite. So um, I'm going to try these two real quick. Yeah, I think this middle one is my favorite. All right, let's rank them. All right, guys, so for me, I'm going to put number four in last place. Uh, number five, I'm actually going to put in second to last. Then it really came down to these three. Uh, I think uh, this one here, which was the really hot one, I'm going to put third. Um, number one, could have put second. And that third one was going to go into first place. All right, so let's find out what my favorites were from uh, worst to first. Uh, this one right here is the... Okay, not too surprised. This is the, is that this one? Yes, right. This is the, the top floor is the one that came in last for me. Um, this is also the lowest proof, 86 proof. Um, yeah, that one just was kind of the weakest out of all of them. It just it really didn't have that, you know, a, a good flavor punch like some of the other ones did. Uh, I guess the top floor when you're at 86 proof doesn't really make too much of a difference, <laughs> I guess. Let's find out what was in second to last. Okay, so that is the, that's the small batch. All right, 90 proof. So we're working our way up. It seems the higher the proof, the better. But is it really? Because I think that number three was the full proof because that thing was a freaking beast on the palate. And maybe because it's just a fresh bottle, maybe not a lot of air got into it. Maybe it'll mellow out a little bit. But yeah, that was... Holy shit, man. This is the this is the full proof right here. This thing drinks it drinks hot, uh, at least in the beginning. Let it mellow out. We'll see what it turns into. But that is just young hot whiskey. It's it's practically white dog coming out of there. It's uh, it drinks pretty hot. Um, so now it came down to the single barrel and the bonded. So I'm curious which one came out on top here. Wow. OK. I'm actually not surprised. Uh, in second place, I have the single barrel. And in first place, I have the bonded. You know, a lot of you out there are going to want to collect the entire vertical, and I get that for the collector and all of us. Uh, but for those of you who don't feel like buying all five bottles and just want to know what's the best one I got to get, um, yeah, avoid the top floor. It's good. It's not great. Um, the small batch, just a slight step above the top floor. These are gonna be the three you're gonna to wanna to focus on. The bonded, the single barrel, and the uh, and the full proof. Now the full proof, like I said, it drinks very hot. Um, maybe it'll open up over time, get a little bit sweeter. The single barrel, again, it's very balanced. It's just a little bit more on the sweeter side, but again, it's a single barrel. There might be one out there that's better. Um, and then the bonded, which actually ended up being my favorite. Again, now we come into the, the one bottle that we know is at least four years old. Uh, it's got some really great balance to it. Very affordable. Like I said, these are all into that $17, $18, $25 dollar range for a bonded bourbon from Buffalo Trace at that price point. It's a kind of a home run. I really like that one uh, and the single barrel as well. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this blind mashup as we tasted all the new benchmarks from Buffalo Trace. Uh, again, not sure which one is going to be near you, but if you're interested in these, definitely keep an eye out. Keep an eye out in other states. They're really affordable. And uh, like I said, I think the bond in the single barrel uh, really brings some uh, actually really great quality for the price point. So uh, if you liked the video, hit the subscribe button down below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. Uh, if you've had these, let me know what you think. Which one is your favorite if you've had the full lineup? And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers. I'm going to have some more bonded. Cheers, everybody. Thank you.